Hello everyone, Namaste. My name is Luke Elijah. Thank you for watching this video. I'm here in New York City and with Max Reiser, the multi-talented Max Reiser, alright? Max is very awesome. I've known him for several years now. And in fact, he was the first one to introduce the concept of Reiki to me back in 2007. Where, and back then, I didn't even know what it was. And um, Max has, is really, really passionate about many in creative pursuits and industries. He is an actor, a producer, he's appeared in many films and uh, different projects on stage and off on, on film and he's also a Reiki master, a spiritual practitioner in fact, you know what, I'm going to end here and let him tell you exactly what he does thank you Max for coming onto my talk show thank you um, yeah. yeah, so uh, I'm a Reiki master my uh, first spiritual teacher was an Indian guru by the name of Janik Tapasviji Shahi and I met him about 10 years ago and I had been sick for about 6 months and um, it was freaking me out. I had been given a few different antibiotic cures from doctors both here in New York City and back at home in Amsterdam and nothing was working. So one of my best friends in the world said, why don't you come meet this healer? And I was a little skeptical, um, but then uh, we had a chance meeting at a dinner party and he told me that he would never charge me. And that was like my golden ticket, so I went to see him and he put his hand on my belly and I I broke down crying in a way that I've never experienced tears before. I was bawling and sobbing and it was beautiful and deep and profound and uh, instantaneously uh, healing. Intense release for you. Oh, very intense release. Uh, very amazing. Um, and such a immediate surge of faith and hope. Yeah, and, and it sounds like a, such a wonderful transformative experience it must have been. Yeah, it was truly a... Uh, one of my first awakenings, if you will. Um, so, um, I studied with Janet for about two years doing um, mantra meditation. Uh, actually became very serious about meditation and my lifestyle and um, experienced some visions in my meditations, um, the Kundalini rising the snake, um, some really beautiful, amazing things. And then sort of, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, do I become a monk and go live in a cave in a mountain, or do I remain an actor and a spiritual healer, teacher, what have you, like, what, what is my path, what do I do? Um, and so, um, uh, a regular talk therapist I was seeing at the time was also a Reiki master, and she suggested I seek out Reiki, and I did, and I immediately had a great rapport with the, the teachers, it was a couple from Costa Rica. And um, I studied various levels with them uh, quite quickly because they, um, they had a sense of the work I'd already done with Janet. And so uh, within very little time I became a Reiki master and then followed that by becoming a Karuna Reiki master and have just continued to study as many modalities as possible, mm -hmm. continue to study modalities, continue to study more um, traditional therapies as well as um, the world of coaching and what that means to stand as a coach for a client. Um, and, you know, continuously working really hard on myself. And I could definitely say that I'm overdue for a healing session of my own. Um, and I'm actually about to leave town for about two months. And I, I found myself um, suggesting to a lot of my clients and people that I've been working with um, to just take a little break. You know, find a little bit of silence. Sit with yourself disconnect in order to reconnect and so um, that's a really good tip actually very good recommendation yeah now speaking of which you know I wanted I wanted to ask you how do you keep grounded as well as equally spiritually connected in a chaotic and noisy environment and place like which is arguably one of the toughest cities in the world to live like New York yeah uh, well, it's definitely a constant challenge, which mm -hmm. is cool, because that's part of what life's about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very fortunate I happen to live right across uh, the from street a nice from a very, very nice, river, nice yeah. big park, uh, a river. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of uptown Manhattan, because you can actually find a lot of parks and the cloisters and really beautiful areas. Um, so that's, I think that's really key, and I think that's important no matter where you are, is to re, if you're not directly connecting to nature, to force yourself to reconnect to nature, go stand barefoot in the grass, reconnect with the Earth's magnetic field, um, hug a tree. There's trees everywhere. If you can't stand barefoot in the grass, hug a tree. 
uh, and just really, really connect and take a moment to witness the sky above you and feel the ground beneath you. Breathe in the air, feel the sunshine. If it's snowing, feel the snow. Whatever it is, just really, it's, it's so, so important to continuously pause and be present in the moment. And that's, that's where the magic is, that's where the miracles are, that's where healing is, that's where, that's where life happens. Yes, it's very well said. Thank you for that. I mean, it's a misconception that in order to be spiritual, you need to be someplace like Hawaii or Sedona or go to the Himalayas, you know. You can actually be in an urban, urban environment, in a metropolitan city, and still seek uh, solace and solitude in any environment, basically. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and the, more, the more you work with meditation and the more solid you become with your practice, the easier it is to... Just tune in. And yeah. tune all the gum out and tune into your higher self inside. Yes. Absolutely. And then, yeah. and then those, those, those images of Hawaii and the sunshine can come in as come, exactly. come in if that's what you need. That's what I always tell them. So, I always tell my clients and people that I meet, and even my workshop participants, that actually, you know, because we, in our practice, you can actually, in your meditation, actually energetically go to those places or project to those places and really feel as if you are, you know, tapping into the, the vortices of these places without actually going to these sacred sites at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it can be anywhere. After all, space and time are actually one as well. Yeah, and, and it doesn't it, that doesn't have to be limited to just space or a place mm. that applies to anything, any sort of knowledge you want to tap into, any sort of emotional feelings, any anything you want to tune into, it's it's available. It's really to you. available. You just have to yeah. yes. become very good at yes. knowing what you, know, you want yes. and, and Yes, or what we call the Akashi records, you can actually tune in and tap into sure. that anytime. Sure. Right. Oh, you know, of all the many cities that you live, you live in all these crazy, beautiful artistic cities like Amsterdam, London, Paris, New York, you know. Which would be your favorite and why? Alright, so oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Copenhagen holds a very special dear place in my heart because I was fifteen when I moved there. I only mm -hmm. lived there for one year. Oh, it's the year I started having sex. It's the first year I went to a concert. It was like my... First time, virginal was, time for... Yeah, it was like my teenage awakening yeah, year. Yes, not yes, my yes. spiritual awakening, my teenage awakening. <laughs> and it was, it was good. Um, so Copenhagen holds a special place in my heart. My family is also there. Um, Paris. I would like to redo Paris because I was so young when I lived there. And I do very distinctly remember feeling that just walking down the street of Paris is magical. And so I'd like to re-experience that as a grown up. And um, New York, uh, New York's been a really good home for me. Um, it's it's not for everyone. It's very intense. I hear it's a love hate relationship on here. I know it's a love hate relationship, um, but I felt very at home here, and it's uh, a truly welcoming city. In New York, you're actually uh, a show producer, and you work a lot in television and film, and even stage productions. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, um, I uh, the least the least I've done is in television. It's been mostly film and stage. Some web series. I'm about to start producing a new web series as well. Um, I've been trying to push the bar a little bit with the work I produce on my own, um, yes. and I've definitely uh, I continue to do acting in projects, but I feel myself moving further away from acting and more towards producing and directing because I I, I want to be in control of the stories I tell. Mm. You know, I want to tell stories that mean something to me instead of playing a part in somebody else's story. Um, and I think, you know, storytelling, that's, that's what theater is, that's what film is, uh, that's what reading books is. It's storytelling. It's, um, it's an integral part of healing. It's an integral part of staying connected to your, your lineage. Um, it's an integral part of being a part of a community. And that's what I found more and more of is, um, the need for community. I love that how you could actually infuse a spiritual concept and spirituality, your your spiritual awakening and consciousness into your your profession as a film director and producer. Yeah. yeah. Goes hand in hand. It actually makes you more creative in that respect. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so uh, to to piggy tail on what I was saying before, I'm following my own advice to my clients and I'm taking some time off and I'm gonna be doing uh, some extensive writing. Uh, continue my soul searching because that's never ending. Yes, of uh, course. Ending and that's the beauty of it, really. Yeah, the yeah. journey is the destination. Yeah. Mm. Well, speaking on this topic, what will be some of your ongoing uh, projects or upcoming 
uh, assignments that you have, right. including this two month trip that you're about to take starting tomorrow. So sorry, sorry tomorrow. Sorry for you. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a great little brother. I have lots of great brothers, but mm. my little brother is especially great. He's taking me to Vegas tomorrow. We're gonna jump out of the plane. Uh, we're gonna take a first chocolate. time skydiving. First time. You skydiving. need to tell me about it. I always want to. I will tell you about it. And I'll tell you tell you something else. The reason I'm doing it is because to me it's the scariest thing in the world. Yes. And we'll once come, yeah. I've done that, and I've been working on that a lot because mm. I grew up actually with a lot of fear for everything. Mm. Um, we all do. We all have different kind of fears, yeah. and when, when you face it, it no longer affects you anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very. Yes. It's a transcending that, that you know. It's a beautiful, uh, like like a caterpillar coming off a. Uh, you know, yeah. metamorphosis into yeah. a butterfly, it feels like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so from Vegas, I'm going straight to Asheville to spend two weeks with friends, do some work, yeah. experience the city, and then I'm off to Europe to visit friends in London, family in Amsterdam, and Copenhagen. Um, it's definitely been a fun summer, which which is important. You know, I've never really been motivated by money. Um, um, even even to make this trip work for myself and just leave my life for two months took you know took some risk taking and a certain like leap of faith, and it's amazing how how when you trust everything yes, just exactly. totally falls into place every time. But why for me? You know, I'm taking a, this two and a half month right. hiatus, Lucky and go. right? So what I do is I just trust the universe and the <laughs> synchronicities and miracles just explode. And I meet so many interesting people and somehow I just can't be able to afford it. It just works. It just yeah. if you live in the present mm -hmm. moment. You know, I, I'm really excited for you because tomorrow is his birthday and he's breathing out the plane. So skydiving, overcoming a fear on your birthday. What a wonderful birthday present. Way yeah, to celebrate amazing. your 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 birthday. You know. Thank yeah. you, little bro. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so um. uh, when you come back from this two months, what do you hope to achieve or, or create? Or right. What's so new um, for you? yeah. So I recently updated my um, my website because in addition to all the different energy healings I do, yeah. I've also been mm -hmm. coaching people. Um, so um, I've updated the website a little bit. It's now called Always Rising. I love that Always Rising. Um, this is a play, a pun on your family name. A pun on my stage yeah. name. Stage name. Stage name. Stage name. Stage name. Riser. Riser. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it, I felt like it was time to integrate Max Riser, yeah, Max Riesoy, yeah. the healer, and just be okay. one one person and stand for one thing. And that I think also has to do with my own acceptance. And I am all these things, um, and we all get to be anything we want to be, and that's awesome. So anyway, there's the updated website. I'll be uh, making a web series with my film partner, Sal Bardo. Uh, we did Chaser together. Um, we're very excited about that. Um, and there's a few other projects in the works. Um, and some of my own writing, which is uh, probably the most exciting right now. Well, this sounds really fun. I wish you much success in all these projects. You know, you, do do uh, keep in touch and let me know how those goes. Right. How can the audience reach you? Where can you go to find out more about you and what you have to offer and, and right. keep in track with what all these interesting developments in your life? Yeah, so my social media is a little confusing. Um, but you can find me at alwaysrising, R-H-Y-S-I-N-G dot com, alwaysrising dot org, alwaysrising on Twitter, alwaysrising on Instagram. Um, yeah, so from this point forward, always rising. That's easy because it's just always, always rising across all the social medias. Yes, yeah. clever then, right? <laughs> clever, very clever. Yeah, it's a good one, it's a good one. Alright, um, next, could you give uh, the audience one last tip or a piece of advice from all your many years of uh, experience and you have led a very interesting life? You really have, you know? Yeah. Like some stuff uh, that. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we end, we should talk about the ayahuasca. Uh, Seminars, right, workshops, right, right. and gatherings that you, you sometimes co-host or, right. or organize. Right, I haven't organized or co-hosted, mm -hmm. but I've sat in on several of the ceremonies, and sometimes mm -hmm. I help the shaman, uh, which is always a very rewarding, gratifying, awesome experience. Um, I was introduced to ayahuasca by um, one of my ex-boyfriends from when I was 18, who's maintained a, a very strong friendship with me. and. Um, he was introduced to ayahuasca by his little brother, and I saw over a period of a few months how his life was truly changing from using this plant medicine. And so when he offered me to come to Berlin, where he was at the time, to sit in on a ceremony, it was for the winter solstice two years ago. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's been amazing. Every, every ceremony for me has been a lesson in love. I have re reopened memories that I haven't touched in a lifetime virtually, and I have re-explored and reconfigurated my relationships with family members 
it's it's been mind blowing. There's been lots of beautiful visions and lots of um, messages and visions, uh, but really it's the lesson in love that um, keeps me going back. It's not for everyone. You have to be very careful. You should do it with somebody who's trained and experienced and comes highly recommended. And you have trust. to be yeah. very careful to not mix it with certain medications. Mm. That's where a lot of the risk factors come in. So everyone needs to do what they feel right about it. I'm certainly not condoning or condemning it. It's um, a good tip. For me personally, it's been, it's yeah. been amazing. And like, like in any profession, there are charlatans who are out to make a buck. And you have to be careful. So trust the intuition on this. Yeah, mm. and do your research. Like really, like do your research. It's worthwhile doing your research on it. Right. Um, and to, to answer your last question, yes. I, I think the main thing I would say to people, um, and it's funny because I've been discussing this with some of my friends and they, they see me as very courageous and I don't see myself as very courageous. And maybe that's because I've always been aware of the fears and I'm the one who's working through the fears even if nobody knows them. So, but I think, I think if I'm really honest with myself, I have been very courageous because regardless of all those fears, I've kept going forward, I've moved countries several times, I've engaged in lots of different professions and careers and relationships and I'm, yeah, I think um, be bold, be courageous, trust yourself most of all. And yeah, if you can remember every now and then to just pause and be in the moment, um, you'll find yourself and that way life will find you. Wonderful, well said, right? Thank you, Max. We wish you, you all so the best much. in your, for your trip as well as in your career and we hope to see you again in one of my future videos. Awesome. Thank you. Keep rising. <laughs> yes, you too. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. So much. All right. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, Oliver, Peace. I hope you're watching as well, right? <laughs> Max and I have a good time catching Oliver. up and talking about you. So thank you guys for watching this video. We hope to see you again in one of my future videos. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.